Hey guys, Cameron Murray for Ains of Shields for episode 3, Uprising, and obviously was really looking forward to this episode. I've really been enjoying this season, as you guys know. I really think they've been impressing me, and this, in you know, no surprise, was another great episode. I like that this season is very consistent. Uh, typically, you know, like I said, I think the thing holding Ains of Shields back is that it didn't get to be at 10 o'clock, and with them being at 10 o'clock, they're able to do a lot more. And this by far was the best episode of the season. This episode was really intense. There was a lot going on this episode. Really good stuff overall. But let's just get into it because there was a lot of stuff to talk about. And uh, let's just jump right into it. So we see Yo-Yo, who I'm guessing is going to be not regular, but she's going to be on the show a lot, which I do like seeing. She's attending a bachelorette party in Miami for her friend Maria, who is actually getting married. And Matt calls her, and she ignores the call. But Maria calls her back. We don't know why she ignores the call, but Matt answers but there's some sort of power surge that knocks out all power for as far as the eye can see. Complete blackout. There's no power, and the partygoers don't seem bothered it at first, but then a helicopter falls out of the sky, and obviously this means shit's gonna go down. We don't really know what it means, but we just know that obviously it's not a good thing. But we then see director Jeffrey Mage, uh, G Jeffrey is watching a video of a member of the Inhuman Resistance whose face and voice are hidden, claiming responsibility for the blackouts in Miami, and he says it was an attempt to get the attention of world governments and demands that those governments put an end to Inhuman uh, registration. That's what he feels needs to be done, that he feels that Inhumans, you know, are causing a problem and that they need to put an end to this. So Fitz tells director Mace that, the transmission was untraceable, meaning that it wasn't done by a job not that by a nut job or a lone wolf. The only inhuman cable of blacking out an entire city was Lincoln, so it was probably an EM, and of course Lincoln's dead, so it was probably an EMP device. Burroughs from Shield's PR department is worried about PR. Matt gets heated, and Mace tries to calm everyone down, and I like the way that everyone was really scrambling here, because yeah, this is a problem. I mean, who caused this blackout? How did this happen? Mac then brings up Yo-Yo. Mace wants Mac and Coulson to go check it out, because obviously this isn't, you know, normal what happened here. This obviously is a problem. So Coulson and Gemma are still worried about May. Mace arrives and tells him that she's at a C uh, CDC facility in upstate New York. Just then, Chen dies right on the spot, and Gemma's worried the same thing will happen to May. And honestly, this definitely did hold some weight. I mean, we got a little bit with Chen, but knowing that he went, you know, he kind of went through the same thing as May, it really makes us worried for May. And honestly, I could really see them going in a direction this season where they eventually kill May off. I could really see that happening. Uh, at this point, I could. But Gemma then runs off to find someone to help. Colson wants to go with Gemma, but Mace orders him to go to Miami, that he needs to go to Miami. And as we know, Mace really does want to work with Colson. But you definitely do see in this episode definitely less of a partnership and more of, you know, him working with Colson and him just kind of being his, you know, guide, you know, guide for that. So Yo-Yo is still at the party, can hear writing in the city. Against Yo-Yo's advice, Maria heads into the city to find her fiancé, and Yo-Yo goes there. Obviously, Yo-Yo knows it's not safe, but she goes with her nonetheless. So, once again, the best stuff in this episode um, has to do with Robbie and Daisy. I mean, they definitely were great in this episode. I mean, their other stuff was great, too, but Robbie and Daisy is just so riveting, and everything that's going on there, I'm really loving. He reveals to Daisy, as we know, you know, he said that they were going somewhere. I thought that he was going to reveal it all, and he kind of starts to reveal some roots about his past. They're actually going to go see Robbie's uncle, Elias Morrow, who is in a state penitentiary. He's there for attempted manslaughter, and Robbie says that Elias worked at Momentum and that he's a good man who did a bad thing, and basically I'm guessing that he, you know, didn't mean to hurt whoever he did. So Daisy and Robbie overhear a radio report about the Black in Miami, just as it occurs in LA as well, and uh, it, I mean, it's it's really, it's, it's going everywhere. We don't know who's causing this, but it seems like it's a very serious blackout. They are affected by it too. We then see Radcliffe, who wasn't in the last episode, and as well as Ada, you know, she's back as well. He's working in his lab with Ada on a device to help May. Radcliffe hides Ada away before Gemma arrives with May. I never said this, but I never talked about how hot Mallory Jansen really is because damn was she attractive in this episode. I know she's an android, but she is really attractive, honestly. Very attractive, and uh, it was nice seeing her. Definitely nice to look at. But uh, he hides Ada away before Gemma arrives with May. We know, obviously, you know, he wants, he's not telling Gemma about what's going on. So, London, LA, Moscow, and Miami are all blacked out. Coulson knows that these are cities where Inhumans were relocated to. And basically, someone's trying to do this, you know, as kind of like a calling. As a, there's definitely a specific reason for this going on. I thought that was very interesting we found this out. That it was all, you know, places that Inhumans were located to. There's obviously a reason why this is happening. 
So Robbie held uh, Robbie's Hell Charger is still working. He's speeding it towards Gabriel, who's stranded in a bad part of LA. Robbie reveals he got vengeance on the thugs who put Gabriel in a wheelchair, and he <clears throat> excuse me. And it was cool to see uh, a character, you know, Chris from The Walking Dead without seeing Chris from The Walking Dead because Gabriel's such a different character. And I like that. I like that he's not doing a lot because I want to like this actor and I'm hoping that this he will win me over in this, you know, in this show because you guys know I really did not like Chris and I'm hoping that it was worth killing him off. But he thought that that would make the Go Strider go away, but it didn't. He's now he's trying to finish what Elias started. Robbie and Daisy then find Gabriel just as some looter turns their attention to him. They fight. Quake uses their powers to save Gabriel, one of the thugs put the gun to Gabe's head, and I like that Robbie and Daisy are working side by side in this episode, you know, they weren't clashing, this wasn't Daisy trying to get information out of Robbie, now that they kind of are established and they know what they are, now they can work together, and I really did like seeing that, and you really do feel their bond throughout this episode, and they did a really good job with that, and it's definitely one of the high points of this season by far. So our men then storm the building where Yo-Yo is in Miami. They demand to take the Inhuman, and Radcliffe and Gemma are using technology to examine the 3D model of May's brain. They find that she and the other victims are literally being scared to death, which is really interesting overall. We don't really know how this is happening, but clearly these visions that they're getting, the reason that they're seeing everyone, to me, it seems like they're seeing dead corpses, which is really fucking creepy, but I have no idea what's going on there. Really weird stuff. Uh, but again, really different, and I like that Agent Shield is doing that. They're kind of changing things up, and I think it's kind of cool. But Matt Colson and Fitz are then en route to Miami. The armed men in Miami say they know there's an inhuman in the vicinity, but they just don't know who it could be. So Colson's team enter the blackout zone, and their electronics, including Colson's hand, turn off. And I thought that was kind of funny that Colson literally had to turn off his hand. Uh, obviously, you know, he needs his hand, but again, we have to remember that it is an electronic hand. It's not real, and... Again, Fitz determines that they can track the source of the EMP down old school. And again, just like all season, I like the different dynamics in this episode. We don't really get to see Coulson and Fitz, just those two working together, but we did get to see in this episode. You know, we got to see those three working together, and I like seeing that here. You know, typically Coulson has worked with May, but this season he's working, they're changing it up, he's working with Mac and Fitz, and I like seeing that. I think it's just an interesting dynamic, and I like the way they're doing that. So, Robbie, Daisy, and Gabriel take shelter in Robbie's home, obviously because it's very dangerous anywhere else. Daisy's still nursing her arms from using her powers, and again, I like that Daisy has that vulnerability, where when she used her powers, she does get hurt. Before it was that, she, uh, you know, was twist, you know, her arm was twisting, and again, her arm's, like, twisting everything. So, Robbie offers to get some medicine, and the R men are about to kill a magician that was turned over as an inhuman. Yo-Yo then uses her speed to take their guns, but Maria notices, rats are out, they turn on her just as Colson teams arrives to take them down, which was awesome, I love seeing that. May's condition is then deteriorating, and Radcliffe suggests just killing her right off the bat. He thinks that they should just kill her because there's no saving her. And I honestly thought they were going to. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. I honestly thought that they were going to kill May. It just seemed like there wasn't really any hope for her, and I really thought this is what they were going to do. But Colson then interrogates one of the armed men. It turns that the blackouts are actually a plot by the watchdogs to hunt down Inhumans, we find out. Which, that was a very clever twist. The fear of the watchdogs has been there throughout the entire season. I mean, think about the uh, first episode. You know, they thought the watchdogs were the cause of everything. And I feel like the watchdogs, they're going to permeate most of the action that goes down this season. And I'm all for that. I mean... We, you know, we don't have Hydra anymore, so we need a new major threat to S.H.I.E.L.D., and I think the Watchdogs are exactly said threat. You know, there are so many Inhumans within S.H.I.E.L.D. now that having the Watchdogs still out there just adds this really big threat, and I think they're really going to cause a, you know, they're, they're really going to cause a bestir this season. I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of damage they do. So Daisy and Gabriel talk. Gabriel says he ended up in the wheelchair after being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and he worries that Robbie will be lost without him. And honestly, yeah, I think Robbie would kind of be lost without him. I mean, that's one of Robbie's purposes, is helping his brother, and if he didn't have Gabriel, I don't think Robbie would have as much hope or have as much want to live and probably would be a hopeless, uh, you know, lawless vigilante. I think that really is what he'd do. Which Robbie already is kind of above the law, but, you know, he definitely is, he has that humanity in him because of Gabriel. And it kind of is making me think that they're going to kill off Gabriel. I just kind of feel like they're going to do that just so they can make Robbie at a greater loss. But I feel like Daisy, that's going to be the thing to give him humanity if, if Gabriel does die. That's what I'm thinking, at least. 
But Colson's team discovers the watchdogs have a list of names and assist numbers off the inhuman registration list. Fitz hatched the plan to solve the Black Ops by triangulating the source with homing com compasses, and Radcliffe is, reported, is proposing that they reboot May's brain into bringing her to clinical death and reviving her, and I thought it was definitely a smart plan to I mean, if, especially the fact she's getting scared to death, if they just reboot her brain, then they're gonna have to do that, but at the same time, thinking she's not a robot, so how the fuck are you gonna do that? And they put the plan into action, they're about to revive May, and a blackout hits, Mace is then alters the blackout in DC, after this, it's like non-stop chaos. I mean, this is really when things get great. He's alerted to the blackout in DC. He gets a call from the president. There's another video message of the Inhuman Resistance. The president wants to send troops to take out the Inhumans by any means necessary, but Mace buys Coulson another hour, that they need more time, so Fitz then pinpoints the location of the EMP signal. The team then heads out, and Mace still hasn't come back. Radcliffe then hacks his brain for a solution. He remembers something, and... He brings out a self-sustaining energy source he's been working on, and he brings out to, you know, he brings it to bring May back, and May wakes up with no memory of her illness whatsoever. It seems that he didn't need to do anything. But definitely, it's still there. I don't think it's just gone. I think definitely, I think it's like a temporary thing, and I think it's interesting the fact that she doesn't remember it at all. That's definitely really weird, the way that turned out. So... Colson's team then find the EMP heavily guarded. Yo-Yo springs to action, disarming the watchdogs. Then the team moves in, takes them out. Fitz is able to undo the blackout, and Col and luckily they are able to undo it. So Colson finds passports and, v and uh, visas, suggesting that the watchdogs have actually been taken globally and that they're pretty much all over the world. So they are a much bigger threat. We definitely see, you know, the watch with watchdogs everywhere, they have a lot more to fear about. And again, that really does add a lot of more suspense to the season overall, which I really do like. So Gabriel then asked Daisy about the Inhumans, but she denies having ever met one, which we know obviously is not true. And I don't know why Daisy's trying to cover this up exactly, but Gabe isn't buying her story. He felt her powers. He knows she's Quake, and he says her secret is safe with him as long as she leaves and never goes near Robbie again, we see. You know, he doesn't want her near Robbie. He feels like it's just going to interfere with things, and... Again, I don't really know why he was, you know, why uh, Daisy felt like not telling Gabe was a bad thing, you know, was necessarily, you know, was a bad thing by not telling him what was going on. I, I just thought overall that was kind of strange. I mean, Robbie knows that she's Quake. He probably would have told Gabriel anyway. Why is it a problem if Daisy would have told Gabriel? I just didn't really understand this, but she needs to not go near Robbie, and I'm hoping that she doesn't listen, because I really do love the dynamic between Robbie and Daisy. I think it's one of the strongest things about this season, but... Anyway, Coles reports to Mace that they realize someone with a lot of money and power is backing the Watchdogs. They don't know who this is, but Coulson suggests scrapping the rollout plan and going public with Sheila Mealy. He feels that this is the time to do it. You know, Coulson wasn't for this idea, but now that they know that someone is watching them, they need to do whatever they can to make Shield public, so that way people know that they're out there. And... Mac then confronts Yo-Yo stealing, also that way, you know, they know that's where the Inhumans can retreat to, because obviously, S.H.I.E.L.D. is meant to be a safe place for the Inhumans, and that's where they want it, they want it to stay that way. So, Mac confronts Yo-Yo about stealing the medicine and being secretly in contact with Quake. Yo-Yo shows the art of Ghost Rider on her phone. They discuss it briefly with Colson and Fitz, but go quiet when Mace comes on the television. He clarifies what really caused the blackouts, and Robbie returns to find Daisy gone. Gabriel claims she left when he was asleep, so she did do his ass and Mace then announces the return of S.H.I.E.L.D., reveals the organization's logo. May then calls Coulson, and she says that it should be him on TV announcing S.H.I.E.L.D.'s return, but he says he's right where he belongs, and it seems like Coulson, again, as we know, he involuntar he voluntarily stepped down. You know, he doesn't want to be the director right now. He just feels it's not really his place to do it, and Daisy then hears a speech in her van, but she shuts it off, wanting absolutely nothing to do with S.H.I.E.L.D., and basically going who knows where. We really don't know where Daisy's going, but... Basically, that is the way the episode ends. Then we get the first post credit scene of the year, really, of, of the season. I thought they were done with these because they haven't done a woe return to moments all season. This is the first time they do it, and definitely this was the right time to do it. And honestly, I'm kind of happy they're doing it because a lot of times they did those woe return to moment. They were very unnecessary. They told us things that we already kind of knew, and they just didn't really go anywhere. This one, however, was very interesting. We see Senior Rod and Nadar, who is publicly opposing the Inhumans. She speaks on television against S.H.I.E.L.D. She claims that S.H.I.E.L.D. was actually a puppet of HYDRA, and now is merely a puppet of the Inhumans. And she's really not wrong. Like I said, S.H.I.E.L.D. right now is basically a 
designated safe haven for the Inhumans and nothing more. And she claims that they have sources who say the Inhumans were actually responsible for the blackouts, and she's clearly trying to pin it on the Inhumans, you definitely see. So the Watchdogs report back to her about their blackout mission, and we realize that she must be the head of it all. She says that she's their brother's place, says goodbye before leaving. A Terra Genesis cocoon stands still in the living room. We don't know who her brother could be, but that is the way the episode ends. Really great stuff overall. Let's just get in this episode because there definitely is a lot to talk about. Out. So really, this episode was incredible. There was so much we found out going on. I mean, we didn't find out a ton of stuff, but now we definitely know who the big threat is, and I'm happy that it's not the ghosts. I know a lot of people thought that, oh, the ghosts are going to be the big threat of the season, but no, it seems like now the big threat of the season is, in fact, going to be Senor Rada Nadar and the Watchdogs, and I'm all for this. I think this is going to be an awesome fight because the Watchdogs, you know, they've gone global, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s now gone global, and it's really going to be the strongest struggle for really, you know, who's better, you know, for the Inhumans, really, either, you know, to kill the Inhumans or to, you know, keep the Inhumans, what they really should do, but it definitely seems like Mace and Coulson have kind of as clashing agendas as to what to do with the Inhumans. I mean, we didn't really see Mace's opinion of the Inhumans. We know that Mace is, in fact, an Inhuman, so obviously he does want to help the Inhumans, but it doesn't really seem like he wants S.H.I.E.L.D. to be the ones to house the Inhumans, but we'll have to see the way that that goes down, because that's going to be very interesting. But now that we know that Watchdogs are the head of it all, I think that overall is going to be very interesting the way that that goes. Now, uh, Nader talked about her brother. I don't know what they were really implying with her brother, uh, if they were, you know, who her brother really is, what's going on there, but definitely there's some brother, I don't really know what that's about, but I think that's definitely going to be very interesting. Let's talk about Daisy. Why did Gabriel tell Daisy to leave? I, I don't really know. I honestly don't really know why he told her to leave. It seemed like Daisy and Rob were working well together, but now, I mean, I don't know if it's because of, you know, what's happening to her arms, or if Gabriel, uh, feels that Robbie's better for him. I honestly don't know why he told Daisy to leave. I think Daisy was perfectly fine with Robbie and Gabriel, but obviously Gabriel, for whatever reason, felt she'd be better on her own, and I don't know why, but he sent her out. That was kind of strange, but I really do like where that plot is headed. I just don't want to see Daisy get away from Robbie and Gabriel. I mean, it'll be, it'd be better than them starting a relationship because I just don't really think it's right for Daisy to do right now. I don't think she wants it either, but... I don't know why he told her to go away. You know she's going to come back. You know that this isn't going to be the end of Daisy and Robbie. She's going to find her way back there. Gabriel's going to realize that uh, he needs her, and either one of two things are going to happen. He's going to realize that she needs to come back, or he's going to die. That That's what's going to happen. And I think that scene with Robbie telling Daisy that Gabriel's is everything very much hints that Gabriel's going to die. I see Gabriel dying very soon. The fact that he's getting taunted, I definitely see it happening. But they're doing a good job of developing that relationship. I think overall they took what could have been a one-dimensional relationship and really made it something more, and I really did like that overall. Let's talk about May. There's no way that May is completely done with those visions. I mean, there, there's no, you know, really rhyme or reason why they could just permanently be gone. I don't really understand how they're just gone all of a sudden. What caused May to feel this way? I mean, Radcliffe was going to permanently erase everything and, you know, basically restart her. And I don't really know what's going to happen with that. Uh, but I definitely think that, you know, the visions are not gone, definitely. There's definitely a reason why she's getting it. And I think it's going to be somewhere where it's going to be passed on to somebody. There's a reason like I said, while Ch why Chen and May are seeing those visions, and if Chen died, I think May definitely, it's gonna get to her again, I, I don't think that they're gone for good, we'll have to see what happens with that, no ghosts in this episode though, we didn't really see any ghosts in this episode except for, you know, what happened with May, uh, but the ending of the episode where we see that Terra Genesis cocoon kind of makes me think the watchdogs are messing with their mind because the fact that we literally saw that man just standing in the living room, we don't know who that is or what's happening, but I kind of feel like maybe they're messing with her. I don't really know, but there's definitely something going on there. We'll have to see. I really do like that Yo-Yo is a very big part of this season. I think her and uh, Maxine together are among some of the best. I think they just work really well together, and I really like what I'm seeing from both of them. Definitely really good stuff. Uh, there overall with, you know, their stuff I thought was really well done. Um, definitely really did like seeing that. And then Ada as well, you know, what are Radcliffe's real intentions with Ada? We still don't really know. I mean, clearly they're trying to keep it away from, you know, Gemma. I don't know if it's because it's female or if they don't want her to know the work they're doing. 
But again, you know, we think he's telling, you know, Brad, he's telling, you know, Fitz it's going to help May and everything. But what is the real purpose of Ada? I feel like there's definitely more of a purpose than that. I've thought this since the season started. You guys know this, but I don't really know where that's headed. We'll have to see overall. And then Yo-Yo and Mac, like I said, I, I really do hope those two star relationship. We'll have to see where that's going. They didn't go to see Elias Moro, Daisy and Robbie. They were going to go see his uncle. Why didn't they go see him? I mean, obviously, I know they had to, you know, go because people were after Gabriel. But the blackout's over. So I don't know if Daisy's going to go see Elias or what's going to happen there. I didn't see the promo, so I don't really know where we're headed in the next episode. But overall, guys, really great stuff. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode overall. By far best episode of the season. I know this was my shortest review, but this episode, while crazy was very straightforward and I didn't have a ton to say about it. I had more to say about the other episodes, but still amazing stuff. Real love in the season overall. That's my review. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys in my next show, which will be for This Is Us, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.